Hi guys and welcome to this training session where we're going to take a close look at how to install the different versions of the Drayton Digistat that make up the range. So to begin with we'll look at the 2290M which is the mains version of the new Digistat and this is a four wire thermostat. Now in the box you get the one sheet of paper which is the instructions for both user instructions and installer guide and you get the room thermostat itself. Now to access inside there's two screws underneath so loosen off both of those screws and then the top face splits from the back plate and the back plate itself has a hinged cover so all of the terminations, all of the mains that's housed within is behind this cover and requires a screwdriver to pop the casing open to get access. So should the customer ever need to replace the front face they don't need to go anywhere near the terminations. So here is where your 230 volt permanent main supply connects in order to power the control. And these are your switching contacts, common in the centre, normally open at the top and normally closed at the bottom. And remember these can handle up to 16 amps. And finally we have the two open therm connections. So if you're connecting to an open therm compliant boiler, you can control using that protocol. So now let's take a closer look at how we would wire the new mains Digistat, firstly for relay control on a combi boiler. So firstly we provide power to the boiler via a 3 amp fuse spur. We then take this power out to the two mains terminals on the Digistat to provide the new Digistat with power. We can then take our two switching wires from the external controls connections on the boiler itself. Once the terminations have been completed, the cover can be closed and the face of the Digistat can be reinstalled. For open therm connection, both the boiler and the Digistat still requires a main supply. So this is fed from a 3 amp fuse spur to both the boiler terminals and then on to the Digistat itself. But the difference is this time we don't connect to the external controls connections, we instead connect to the OT1 and OT2 terminals which connect directly to the OT terminals in the Digistat itself. These are not polarity sensitive and typically connected using bell wire. Once again, when all terminations have been made off, the Digistat cover can be closed and the face of the Digistat reinstalled. In this example, I've taken a 5 core cable from the boiler, so it's a 0.75mm cross sectional area 5 core cable to the intended location of where the Digistat is going to be, split the Digistat by undoing the screws, and then open the cover, and this gives you access to the cable entry point and just slot the Digistat over the cable entry and affix to the wall. And then once there, we can then start terminating. So to start with, the main supply, neutral into the bottom of the two terminals, followed by the live into the top of the two. So that gives the Digistat power. And now we can work out the switching arrangements. So both of these cores need to be indicated as they are switch live, so they've got a little flag on them. The black in this case is the common, so it's going to the it's the live out from the boiler, and the grey is the live return. So when the relay in the Digistat makes, whatever is on the black wire goes out on the grey wire. Now there is no earth terminal, and we don't require the earth because this is a class two product, so the earth just gets stowed in a terminal block underneath the rest of the wiring assembly. Close the cover of the Digistat and you'll hear it secure with a click, and then we can install the faceplate onto the back plate and once that's there hold it in at the bottom and do up the two screws underneath until they're snug and then we can reinstate the power. Pop the fuse back in and turn on the fuse spur. That's the installation done of the Digistat. Now all we need to do is configure it to suit the needs of the customer. So that was installation of the four wire mains version now let's have a look at the battery version. The 2290B model of the new Digistat is the two wire battery version. And in the box, as with the previous one, you get a list of instructions, just one sheet of paper. You get the Digistat itself, but with this one, you also get a set of batteries, which is there to run the Digistat. The Digistat splits from its backplate in exactly the same way 
as the mains version. The only difference is that there are less terminations within. So pull the face off. And again, you've got the hinge door that covers all of the terminations, which needs a screwdriver to just pop the clip open. And then when we're inside, you see we've got no mains rail, there's no open therm. All we've got are the switching contacts for the live in and the live out. So when wiring to a combi boiler, the boiler still requires a supply from the three amp fuse spur. But this time there's no requirement to take the mains power to the Digistat itself. This is what the purpose of the batteries are. We then connect the external controls terminals as we did before. And you can see here why this is a two wire thermostat. Once the terminations are completed, close the cover, reinstall the face by hooking in at the top, pushing in at the bottom and doing up the two screws. In this example, I'm looking to upgrade the Drayton CombiStat to the new Digistat, but I'm aware that this can be wired in two different ways, as a three-wire or two-wire thermostat. And this is where the battery version comes into its own, as there is guaranteed to be a live-in and live-out. As ever, it is imperative that we work safely, so whenever working on any of these installations, we must make sure that we safely isolate. Here, I've turned off the fuse spur, and I've removed the fuse. If you can isolate at the fuse board, so much the better. I can then proceed to take the old combi stat to bits, pull off the dial and undo the retaining screw and that will release the cover revealing what the wiring arrangements are inside. And here we can see it is wired as a two wire thermostat so the 2290B is the easiest fit without having to run in any additional wires. I can now proceed to remove the wires from the backplate of the old thermostat and then remove the whole backplate itself, ready for the installation of the new Digistat, making sure I don't lose the little flag on the switch live. And then with the cover open, you can get access to the cable entry and position accordingly, in this case, in a position where the two wires will reach the green terminal rail at the top of the backplate. The backplate can then be secured by any of the pre-made fixing holes. There's three underneath the hinge cover and one on the other side. And then once secure, we can make off the wires, the live in and the live out. Doesn't matter which way around they go, but conventionally you would feed the live in on the common, which is the middle terminal, and the live out on the normally open top terminal. Close the cover and secure with a click and then reinstall the faceplate, hook it in at the top, push it in at the bottom, and do up the two screws until snug. At this point, we can reinstate the power to the heating system, and also we can pop the batteries in to the Digistat itself, under the front cover, and peel off the film protector on the screen. Battery cover on, and we're now ready to commission to the customer's requirements. So that takes care of the hard wired models. Now let's have a look at the versions that have a wireless thermostat with them. The RF901 pack is a single channel wireless version of the new Digistat, and this is likely to take the place of the RF700 and 701 that you're fitting at the moment. In the box, you get the single sheet, which is the installer and user guide. You get the wireless thermostat itself, the single channel receiver with its backplate, the desk stand, and a set of batteries to run the wireless Digistat. So to start with, we'll have a look at the receiver. So again, underneath there are two screws that allow you to split the backplate away from the receiver. Now this receiver will fit directly onto an existing SCR backplate, or indeed any of our single channel controls share the same backplate. And you can see here the volt-free arrangement of the switching contacts. The supplied backplate has five terminals across the top. Neutral and live, which is your permanent supply in. One is your common, two is your normally closed, and three is your normally open. But this backplate also has the provision for the open therm terminals as well. Moving on to the wireless thermostat. Under the cover at the front is the compartment for the batteries, two AA alkaline batteries. And you'll notice on this one, there are no screws underneath. So these don't split like the wired versions do. 
And this is an easy way of identifying if you're looking at a wireless thermostat or the battery powered wired version. On the back, you've got the wall clip, which pops out and you would screw that to the wall and the stat clips onto it. But you've also got the supplied desk stand, which just clips into the slot at the bottom. And that allows you to move the control from room to room. So when wiring this to a combi boiler for relay control, firstly, we need to take a three amp fuse burst supply into the boiler. We then piggyback off of the terminals in the boiler to give the back plate a main supply. And then we can connect the two external controls, the live in and the live out, across terminals one and three. One is the common, three is the on. The single channel receiver can then be clipped onto the back plate and when powered up, will pair automatically to the room stat. Now, if we have an open therm compatible boiler and we want to control using this method, we still provide the boiler with a supply from a three amp fuse spur. We still piggyback off to the back plate to give the control power, but we now use the OT1 and OT2 terminals in the boiler connected to the additional terminal block located on the bottom of the supplied back plate. Once all connections are made off, the single channel receiver can be fitted to the back plate and will automatically pair with the thermostat on power up. In this example, I'm going to be replacing out the traditional RF701 pack because the boiler has been upgraded and it is now going to be controlled using open therm. And I begin by removing the old SCR from its back plate by undoing the two screws at the bottom, lifting off. Now, if I still wanted to control this system using relay control, I could just clip the new receiver onto this back plate or I could commission the new Digistat with the old SCR. But because I want to control using open therm, I need to install the new backplate because it's got those extra two terminals on the bottom. So off comes the old backplate, starting with the wiring and then the retaining screws and the backplate will then come off and the new backplate can go in. Now the fixing holes are in exactly the same position, but you'll notice here there are now two different cable entries. So the mains is supposed to be split from the low voltage of the open therm. So the mains wiring is coming through the large cable entry. And when I install the wiring for the open therm terminals, that will be inside that little divider. So here I'm wiring neutral and live, but the two switch wires that we were using before are now superfluous. So rather than putting them in an active terminal, because remember those three terminals at the top are common, normally closed, normally open. So rather than putting them into there, I'm just going to put them into a separate terminal block just to keep them safe. And this can be tucked in behind the rest of the wiring assembly. So now in with the separate wiring for the open therm connections. This is a bell wire that I'm using here, 0.5 millimeter. It's not polarity sensitive. So we've got neutral and live, which is the main supply. And then we've got our open therm connections at the bottom. Clip on the single channel receiver, hook in at the top, push in at the bottom and do up the two screws. And then we're ready to get the power back on, in with the fuse and on with the fuse spur. And when we power up, the thermostat and the receiver will automatically pair. And so to the final version of the new Digistat, the RF902, which is the two channel wireless version, uh, much the same as the single channel in terms of what you get in the box in so much as you get a paper instructions, you get the thermostat itself, the same thermostat as in the single channel. But you see here that the receiver is different. You've got two channels, you've got heating, and then you've got either heating or hot water, depending on how you configure it. You get the desk stand and a set of batteries. So the receiver sits on an industry standard back plate, two screws underneath, back them off. You don't have to take them all the way out, just loosen them off so that they clear the casing and then they pull out at the bottom. And you can see on this one, you've got six terminals across the top, which match the configuration of a two channel programmer, neutral and live on the first two terminals to run the control. Terminal one, hot water off. So you'll be using that if you're fitting this to a mid position system. Terminal two, central heating off, not used so much now, but it's there if you need it. 
Terminal 3, hot water on. Terminal 4, central heating on. And when we look at the backplate, it's exactly the same backplate as you would find with something like an LP722. The difference between this and the single channel backplate is you'll notice there is no open therm connection at the bottom because this model is not open therm compatible. The stat itself, again, has the battery compartment at the bottom and the war clip at the back. And if you want to install the desk stand, you just insert the tab into the slot like so. So the essence of this model is it's able to take the place of a programmer, giving you control of both central heating and hot water from both the control itself and the app using the Bluetooth link. Here is a process flow diagram of how a typical twin zone system works. And what we can do is replace the room stat and the programmer with the receiver for the RF902. This is exactly the same for a mid position system. We retain the hot water control, just replace the programmer and the room stat. Now this is a process diagram. In reality, everything will be connected by a wiring center, but the same principle holds. The room stat and the programmer get replaced with the receiver and wired into the wiring center. When we look at the wiring diagram, when the room stat is removed, we need to replace this connection with a link of wire to ensure continuity from the programmer to the motorized valve. The exact same process you go through when upgrading a traditional system to Wiser. So let's do it for real and upgrade this Biflow system from a rather tired looking LP to the new Digistat RF902. So as always, make sure you're working safely by powering down and safely isolating, and then we can get underneath and undo the two screws that hold the LP onto the back plate. Just a quick look at the wiring, neutral live. You can see there we're using terminal one, the hot water off, because this is a bi-flow system, and everything there checks out. So we can clip on the two channel receiver from the RF902 pack and do up the two screws underneath. We then need to get into the wiring center to make the change to the room stat. So remember at the moment we've got the room stat connected. We need to disconnect that. So identify the two terminals where the room stat connects and then remove those wires and put them in any terminals that aren't being used. So here one and five are not being used. That leaves two and three available for me to insert a wire link. So that has taken the wired room thermostat out of the circuit. On with the cover and we can then re-energize the system and remember the wireless thermostat that came in the pack is already pre-bound to that central heating zone so what we need to do next is configure the other zone the second channel for hot water so thanks for watching this training video and if you need any more information or resources head over to our website draytoncontrols.co.uk